Hello, my name is Eric Wilson. As I revealed in a previous video while vacationing in Florida in February of this year, I got a phone call from Dan Trigiani, an elder in the Aldershot Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in Ontario, Canada. I attended that congregation for only a few months until I stopped associating with Jehovah's Witnesses in 2015. However, that doesn't matter. Even though the organization preaches on their website that you can leave without hindrance, you cannot. That is a lie they perpetrate to put on a good front to the public. What does the Bible say about men disguising themselves as ministers of righteousness? Anyway, in my case I left four years ago, yet they continue to treat me like a member who is still subject to their laws and punishments. On this occasion, they were accusing me of apostasy, but they refused to give me the specifics of the charge. I served as an elder for 40 years, and during that time I sat on many judicial committees. Fortunately, I never once came across a case of child sexual abuse, nor for that matter was I called upon to deal with what witnesses term apostasy. That being said, the experience should have prepared me for my own judicial hearing. You would think it did not. What I encountered at arriving at the hall shocked me. I couldn't believe how low the organization I once cared so much about had sunk. Before I show you the video, I must apologize for the poor quality of the video portion. I was using a pen camera, which as it turns out, was not up to the job. Try as I might, I could not get the video to synchronize with the audio. However, the audio portion is what's important. I would recommend you turn on subtitles since part of the audio is not that clear. Behold the video. Hi. The parking lot is closed. Can you ask you please just to park in the main way of oh. the main way? Okay. Thank you. All right. Hello. How is everybody? Good. Good. Why is the parking lot closed? Uh, it's just for a private meeting this evening. I think, uh, are you Aaron? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I think they're waiting for you inside. Uh, okay. Gentlemen, we'd ask you, it's just a private meeting this evening. Yeah, they're part of the private meeting. Um, from what do we understand, it's just yourself. If you'd like to go in and, and talk with them and then they can you can figure that out inside. You got four brothers here to block off the hall for a judicial committee? You can talk to them inside. And there's a police officer waiting over there. Is there? I, yeah. The end, we don't know. They're always here, the police. Yeah, but if you'd like to go inside, that'd be great. So, my, my we're, witnesses... We're, 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 we're Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, sure, that's great. Just for this evening, it's, it's a, a private, private function. Meeting. Just for, just for this evening. Well. So we'd ask you just to go inside. You could discuss it with them. All right. Okay, thanks. I'll if come you guys back. want to wait in the car, stay warm. Yeah. Or do you want to... I'll just ask them and I'll come back. Yeah, please. Yeah. Because you need, a, you need some witnesses here, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at the very bare minimum, you need two witnesses. And, yeah. You know, this is a standard that, you know, it's a Bible standard. The Bible, the Bible lays out. Yeah. Know. Yeah. If you want to discuss it with them inside, that'd be great. And you're right. a senior c citizen too, right? So you know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If like, you want to discuss it with them inside. You can see how intimidating inside. this whole thing is, right? No. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Said the guy standing there guarding the gate.
All right, I'll go talk with him. Yeah, right. I'll be right back. Hello. Hello. All right. Hello. Glad you can make it. I have two witnesses. I'm sorry, you're the only invited one. Why can't they come? It doesn't involve them. It does involve them. Well, you, you, I think we laid it out quite plainly that they only want to see you. This is a shepherding process. We're not shepherding anyone else. I wasn't put to be as a shepherding process. It was put to me as a judicial committee. Hello, Eric. That is primarily Hello? a shepherding <laughs> process. This, this is a meeting strictly, strictly for yourself. So I'm not allowed to bring anybody in? You're not allowed to bring anybody in. Okay. Can we invite you in? At the risk of getting well, You can invite me in. I just want to see if I want to risk it. you got two guys here. Two guys standing there. Two guys standing there. you got the parking lot blocked off. I don't know how many are inside. It's private property. What do you think? Are you expecting me to what, bring in a gun or something? What, what is this? Look, we are, we are welcoming you to the meeting that we've arranged. Now, we don't want to see you get cold. Those are pleasant but words, place, but they, they belie the re reality. Mm -hmm. Let me go talk to my friends. So, they got two more guards at the door. Yeah. And then there's, I don't know how many inside. I, I saw two more. Well, they're, they're guarding the door. Huh? Two brothers standing by the door. Why? I don't know. I don't know what they expect. There's a level of paranoia here that's off the charts, well, what, totally what, unchristian. What, what, what's wrong? So they bothers so, me. So they don't want you to have a witness here? No. No, they won't allow any witnesses. Who knows what they want to do? You know. So I. Uh, so what are you going to do, Eric? Are you going to comply or? That's so bizarre. Yeah. And the thing is, I haven't been going to meetings for four years. So I don't even know why I've been called here. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, Eric... I hope, you're, you, I hope you're cataloging all this in your brain. Yeah, I just suggest you to talk to them inside. I don't know the details. But so, are you... I'll go talk with them. I may be right out. Okay. I'll just get a feel for what's going on. Okay. okay. If you need anything, just pick up the phone and call me, okay? Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll wait in the car. All right. All right, I'm going to risk it. So what's your name? You should remember me. No, I don't remember you. I remember the face, but I don't remember the name. Hi. Hi. Hi, Duke of so which one's Dan? I'm Dan. Dan. Lionel. Brian. Brian. And Brian. Okay. Two years since you've been here? Sorry? Two years since you've been here? Four years. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. My case, how much my notes are there? Oh, well, Just need your Bible. Your Bible. If you don't want to bring your Bible, my Bible is in my computer. We have, we have a couple extra Bibles. You're welcome to use one of our other. I've got a hard copy for you. Why can't I bring my case in? If you don't need a case, you should have a case. Yeah. You know exactly what's, uh, you know, what you want to say, right? No, I don't. I don't even know what the yeah. accusations are. Well, we let you know when I invited you to the meeting, the allegation was apostasy. Well, so I, need, I need a definition of that, and well, I need evidence. Yeah, we have that. So please leave your case, your jacket. Uh, My jacket? Sure. Anything. Sure. We don't want to have any recording devices, okay. any cameras, any transmitting devices. Because we don't have any recording, any devices, any home. You don't need anything because you are three and I am one. Yeah. So we want to have a face-to-face -face discussion. We right. want to have a good, friendly and, uh, discussion. I haven't been attending meetings for four years. I sent you a letter mm -hmm. asking why I'm even here. Right? I'm glad you responded. You're here. And the question is, why am I here? I, uh, I find it totally unacceptable that you would not allow me even to have my notes. Right? Like, you have 
six guards, the three of you, and you want me to take my coat off even. You're so terrified of being recorded. That are you, tells me. Are you recording us, sir? That tells me you've got a, a worry that you know you're doing something wrong, yeah. and you don't want to be trapped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're invited guest here. You're come on our terms, our parameters, and, and that's what we're asking you to do. You know, if your intent is to record or do something. I'm sorry, but an invited know. guest is not what I am. This is a judicial committee. You told me that. The charge is apostasy. Yes. You refuse to define what it is. You refuse to give me any evidence. Well, that's our meeting. That's part of our meeting. How can, so how can I defend time. myself if I don't even know what the charges are? I'm coming in cold. If you sit down, the, the yeah. point is you're, you're trying to discuss everything. Yeah. So, so you're going to give me the charges, and I'm not going to say anything or, or, or answer any know. questions. No, no. I'm not going to answer any questions because I don't know what the charges are. When you tell me all the charges, I'll write them down on a piece of paper, okay. and then I'll take them home. You're welcome to do what you like, Eric. We have a process. And, and you would not disfellowship me, because you'd have to give me time to go home, figure out what the charges are, and then come back and make a defense. Do you accept that? So we have an arrangement for our meeting. It's on our terms. It's how we handle our matters. It's a typical process, and that's what we'd like to do. So rather than just standing here and talking, we answer my question. you into our, our meeting. Please session. answer my question. Well, why, why would you want to, if, if somebody asks me a question, <coughs> what color is your shirt? I know what color my shirt is, you know, and, and, right. and, and what, what aftershave I use. I don't need to go and check this out, right? So why would you want to review something when... when the answer may be obvious. I don't know what the what the evidence yeah, is. So sit down it's like you saying, what color is the shirt I have in that drawer? I don't know Eric, until so I open the drawer. Eric, if I may, we're happy you're here, but we'd like to have a meeting. And the terms of the meeting are you're going to leave your goods here. You know, we have Bible, paper, pens, all that we need in our room here for our meeting place. And, and you're going to give me all the evidence against me? We have some evidence that we're looking at, yes. And then you're going to allow me to go home and prepare a defense and come back. No, those aren't the terms of our meeting. Ah. We're going to... You're going to... I'll be right out, Sam. Please come on in. Why? If, if you'd like. If you're not... Uh, if I come in, I'll be... I'll be... I'll be actually supporting a charade. That's not a charade. I said to you, somebody else will pull out my socks. I don't need to check. Do I have, check. Do I have stupid written on my forehead? Well, I'm not stupid either. Because I, can, I can't tell what your socks are. No. You have to show them to me. Yeah, precisely. And that's it's not the same thing. But We're not discussing the color of socks. We're discussing whether or not I've committed an offense that is worthy of being disfellowshipped. And, say, if you and know the answer, you give us the answer. And if I don't know the answer, answer that's fine. I'm allowed to go home and prepare an answer and come back. Of course, if you don't know the answer, we can't put down that as your answer. If you don't know the answer, you don't know Eric, if I may. But he's just said, I couldn't come back. You're going to make a decision Eric, today. Eric, if I may, you're invited to guess. As an invited guest, you go anywhere as a guest. Yes. You, you've come, so it's on the terms of those that have invited you. So these are our terms. Mm -hmm. So if you're welcome, you're welcome to come in the room, but the terms of you coming in the room is that you leave your coat, your pens, okay. your recording devices that you've brought them along. You have everything you need in there, pen, paper, Bible. We're using dogs. That's all we're using. All right. We don't have any recording devices. We're not even using our little pads for the Bible, we're just going to use the Bible. Itself. Fine, and then uh, I'll listen to the evidence against me, and then I'll go home and work out a defense and get back. Whatever you decide to do, that's the And the, the decision to disfellowship or not will be held until such a time as I can make that defense. So you're invited in our terms, so our terms are what they are. You know? and so the answer is no. Be. No, I'm not providing an answer, yes or no, I'm just... Lying involves saying something incorrect to a person who is entitled to know the truth about a matter. But there is also something that is called a half-truth. The Bible tells Christians to be honest with each other. Now that you have put away deceit, speak truth, wrote the Apostle Paul at Ephesians 4.25. Lies and half-truths undermine trust. Those are our terms of our meeting. But I don't know the terms. I just asked you what they are. And you're saying you won't tell me. Well, this is not the subject of the meeting. Yeah, we're not having a meeting here standing with a coach. You know, please, come on in. No, I agree we're not having a meeting. That's really beside the subject. No, I mean, the room, we're not having a meeting. No, that's not. 
the, 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 the light coming through our room. Right. And my, my question, which you still refuse to answer, is if I come into your room and listen to the evidence, can I go back home, prepare a defense, we'll schedule another meeting, and at that time I'll present my defense and you'll be able to then make a determination whether I'm guilty of apostasy or not. If you know the answer, why would you want to check anything? Why do you ask a question? Just answer my question. That's not our arrangement here. Okay. The arrangement is you come in. So that is clear. Out. You've answered without directly answering. The answer is no. And that's fine. That's what I wanted to know. Our arrangement is that you come in and we have our meeting. That's the arrangement. If you keep repeating it, you're just still saying the same thing. No. I'm not presuming the answer is that no. you don't know the answer. I do know the answer. No, you're presuming that because what we're going to, what we're going to ask you that you don't know the answer to. How could you presume that? Okay. Okay. All right, so that's that's a good how, point. How tall are you? I know the answer. I might know the answer and I might be able to answer you right now. Yeah, that's what we want. But I think you'd admit that I might not know the answer. You might not know the answer. You said, but you didn't know the answer to that point. In which case I'd need to go back. Because you've given me evidence that to you looks like apostasy, I need to defend against that evidence, right? Yeah, well, and if I'm not prepared to do it now because I don't have my notes, because what I've got here is being left here, then I would have to go back, make it yeah. make a defense, and then come back. Yeah, well, and you're saying you won't know that, that's I'll not the arrangement. I mean, there could be five questions, you can answer two of them, that's fine. There are many three, if you don't know, you don't know. So if I don't know, I can come back in a week from now? But that's your arrangement to come back, right? We're just going to say you don't That's know. what I'm asking. Is it, is it your arrangement as well? Well, our arrangement is this meeting. And that's it? And that's it. Thank you. I mean, what, what <laughs> like I said to you, it doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. Okay. Um, I should tell you then, if you disfellowship me on the basis of this travesty, uh, I'll look into legal action, just so you know. Okay? Yeah. Toodaloo. Seriously? A blockaded parking lot? Seven guards that I saw? One patrolling the parking lot and six more standing guard? A show of force. Intimidation. Then I was required to leave all my things, even my suit coat. Humiliation. Then they denied me the support of friends and witnesses and even my personal notes. Fear of the truth, fear of the light. They had only one defense, their authority. I want you to think about this quote from 18th century scholar, Bishop Benjamin Hodley. Authority is the greatest and most irreconcilable enemy to truth and argument that this world ever furnished. All the sophistry, all the color of plausibility, the artifice and cunning of the subtlest disputer in the world may be laid open and turned to the advantage of that very truth which they are designed to hide. But against authority, there is no defense. What he is saying is that no matter how smart a man is, no matter how skilled he may be at deceit, no matter how plausible he can make his false teachings appear, before truth he has no defense. So the only weapon he can muster is force. He must rely on the power of his authority to maintain his web of lies. The organization recognized this at one time. Consider what they had to write about the Catholic practice of excommunication from the January 8, 1947 Awake article on page 27. The authority for excommunication, they claim, is based on the teachings of Christ and the apostles as found in the following scriptures. But the hierarchy's excommunication as a punishment and medicinal remedy, Catholic Encyclopedia, finds no support in these scriptures. In fact, it is altogether foreign to Bible teachings. Thereafter, as the pretensions of the hierarchy increased, the weapon of excommunication became the instrument by which the clergy attained a combination of ecclesiastical power and secular tyranny that finds no parallel in history. Princes and potentates that opposed the dictates of the Vatican were speedily impaled on the tines of excommunication and hung over persecution fires. They called Catholic excommunication a weapon. The Apostle Paul told the Christians in Rome, The night is well along, the day has drawn near, let us therefore throw off the works belonging to darkness, and let us put on the weapons of the light. Romans 13, 12. Excommunication is undoubtedly a weapon of darkness. 
it is not a weapon of light, for if it were of the light, those wielding it would not be afraid of truth. They would not try to silence those who speak truth. Excommunication as practiced by the Catholic Church in the past is synonymous with disfellowshipping, as practiced by Jehovah's Witnesses today. Disfellowshipping is a weapon of darkness. The organization is shrinking. Meeting attendance is down, donations are down, kingdom halls are being sold all around the world, Bethel staff and special pioneer ranks are being decimated. So it appears that the organization, in a misguided attempt to stop the bleeding, is trudging out the only weapon left in his arsenal, this fellowshipping. When Jesus was arrested, he said to the soldiers and guards of the chief priest, Did you come out to arrest me with swords and clubs as against a robber? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and yet you do not take me into custody. Mark 14, 48 and 49. They operated in the darkness, away from public scrutiny, using guards and soldiers to arrest their Lord, intimidation. Then they stripped him and struck him, humiliation. They would not allow him companions nor support of any kind, fear of the truth, fear of the light. Jesus said that what happened to him would also happen to us his followers. Keep in mind the word I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. John 15, 20. We should not be surprised by any of this. If we are made to suffer, we should take heart that we are in a long line of the Lord's slaves who suffer for his name. We should feel as the apostles did before the Sanhedrin. So they went out from before the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy to be dishonored in behalf of his name. I'm not unique in this. Many of you have gone through it, and far worse, and many more will. But all of us should feel the same as the apostles, overjoyed to be counted as worthy to be dishonored in the name of our Lord. It took five days for them to call me back and tell me I was disfellowshipped. The grounds that they read out to me, and which I recorded, of course, were taken pretty much directly from the Shepherd the Flock of God book. I was being disfellowshipped for deliberate action disrupting the unity of the congregation or undermining the confidence of the brothers in Jehovah's arrangement. KS Book 2019, Chapter 12, Paragraph 39.4 This reasoning is predicated on the belief that JW.org is Jehovah's arrangement and that the unity of the congregation supersedes the need for worshiping in spirit and truth. Of course, they will never allow anyone to argue from the scriptures about the validity of this definition. I was debating whether or not to appeal since I knew it would be a waste of time. However, a local brother with extensive familial and business interests was concerned about what he might soon be facing. Since I was doing all this for the XJW and PIMO community, I took his suggestion and consulted an attorney. We put together a letter to see if we could get the organization to see reason. Just the initial consultation and the cost of getting the letter compiled and sent has run up a bill of 1,400 Canadian dollars. Money well spent, mind you. Some have suggested they would be willing to help out should it come to this. If so, if you feel that way, you can either use the donation feature on bereans.net or send funds to my PayPal account at maletti.vivlon at gmail.com. In either case, please make a note that it's for legal expenses, so I'll know where to put the money. As I've said before, I don't take any money for personal use. All the funds donated go to supporting the actual work of producing the videos and articles on YouTube and our websites. Anyway, we had the letter sent to them and I appealed the decision wondering whether or not they would go through with the appeal after getting the lawyer's letter. They did, and the appeal was scheduled for the 26th of April. Here's part of a recording of the phone call to schedule the appeal hearing. Yeah, I could do it Friday the 26th as well. Okay, so so you, it's the same Kingdom Hall where you came before. So it'll be at 7 o'clock, that's okay? All right. Uh, okay. This time, and, am I going to be allowed to take my notes in? Well, I mean, you can, you can write notes. But no electronic devices or taping of recording devices. No, that's not permitted in judicial hearings. No, you, yeah, and I think you, I think you know that. But um, the last time I wasn't allowed to take my paper notes in. 
Well, I mean, you can make no make notes while you're in the meeting if you choose to do so. You know what I'm saying? You can, you know, you know, you can make notes if you choose to do so. Well, I, I, maybe I'm not making myself clear. I, I have yeah. I have printed notes from my own research that are part of my defense. And okay. I want to know if well, I can you, take those into the meeting. Well, you understand what the purpose of this meeting is? The original committee, you know what decision they came to? Yes. So as an appeal committee, you know, what our obligation is, is to determine a repentance at the time of the original hearing, right? That's what our obligation is as an appeal committee. You know uh, that, having served as an elder before. So, yes. So, I mean, if 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 it's to you know provide more information to support what you've been doing, then you know that would be something we'd be concerned about, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, you're not uh, being honest there, or maybe you just don't know what the book says. But the purpose of the appeal is to first establish that there was the basis for a disfellowshipping. And That's then, right. And then to establish that there was, is, was repentance at the time of the original hearing. Right. Yeah. So, That's right. Now, in the case so of the original, in the case of the original hearing, uh, there was no hearing because they would not allow me to take in my own paper notes with with defense on it. That was my defense, and they were basically stripping me of the opportunity to make a defense. Right? How can I defend myself if I'm relying only on my memory uh, when I have evidence that is in writing? And that, that was on paper, no recording, no computer, just on paper. And they would let me take those in. So I wanted yeah. to know if I'm allowed now to take my defense in so that I can present a defense to show that the original hearing, the basis for disfellowshipping was flawed. Well, are you... All right, you, let's put it this way. I'll talk to the other four brothers, but you come, um, you come for the meeting, and we'll uh, and we'll sort that out at the time when when you come, okay? Because I don't want to speak for myself or uh, speak for the other brothers when I haven't talked to them, okay? Right. Okay. Now, isn't it interesting that he couldn't commit to that simple request on the phone? Why were my personal notes of such concern? And why not suggest that he'd speak to the other brothers and then, then get back to me by phone? Why ask me to go to the meeting to sort it out then? It seems that their main goal was to get me to the meeting, and any subterfuge was acceptable to the achievement of that goal. Why? Again, authority. They needed me there in an environment they controlled so that they could exercise their authority. He actually revealed the reason behind the ruling against my use of paper notes. Did you notice? His words. So, if it's to provide more information to support what you've been doing, then that would be something we'd be concerned about, right? You know what I'm saying? More information? I hadn't, and haven't yet, given them any information. Whatever they were exposed to, my videos, my articles, seems to have been all they could handle. Any more would be cause for concern. I assume that they are taking the organization's position that people like me are lying criminal types who are mentally diseased and can infect others. So now it's off to the appeal hearing, this time with three companions. I would like to take a moment to thank my brave friends for backing me up. It's not a trivial thing, because in so doing, they are painting a target on their back, and it is likely that they who must be obeyed We'll be coming after my friends next. We decided to make no secret we were recording everything, so one of my friends stood on the sidewalk, public property, and filmed from there. I had two cameras on me at uh, this time, so you're going to see a composite view of the proceedings. Again, I apologize for the poor videography, but we are not even skilled amateurs. This time, we didn't stop at the entrance, but just barge right up to the front door, which was locked, by the way. Oh, look, here they are. Where 
Turn one. Good. Good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Good. Uh, your friend there is. Uh, he, uh, He's one of my witnesses. One of your witnesses. Yes. A little windy. I'm just here as a witness for the defense. I see. Well, um, your your presence is up to you, of course, but uh, this is private property, so um, you'll have to wait on public property if you don't want. So you don't want me to attend? No, no, you're you're welcome to attend. But these are my witnesses, according to the case book. I'm allowed to have witnesses. Once again, this is a private meeting. Uh, you have been invited to this, but these gentlemen have not. So, what about the direction from the KS book that allows me to have witnesses? I've told you what the procedure is. I don't know that there's much more I can say. That's what you call a non-responsive answer. So, I, I don't understand that. If, I know the KS book too. Um, why, why is it you're stopping it so that it's, it's the KS book? Great. It's a private user. I realize that. It's still from the KS book is based on the KS book. So why are you stopping it? So you can meet uh, with the committee. I understand that. And, and the committee can also call witnesses. witnesses. Okay. And that's Have what we are. by the committee? No. But no, he's, the, brought, he's brought a defense The defense witness. is allowed to bring their own also witnesses. witnesses. And so, that is correct. The bottom line, gentlemen, is Mr. Wilson, you are welcome to come in to this meeting. You have been invited to this. You gentlemen have not. You're on private property, and you know you're going to have to leave. Interesting. Been talks in this so, hall. Okay, so so <laughs> I, I just want to make sure. So, even though the KS says that I'm allowed to be here as a witness for the defense, you're saying no, that's not going to happen today. You're rejecting I'm the direction that you've been either. given from the not governing right. body, actually. Not at all. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You are. No, it's I'm right not, in the book. I'm, do, I'm rejecting your version of it. Uh, no, shall I shall I read it to you? To no. you, from the you don't want me to read it to you You're from the book. Yeah, I realize that, but do you no, I'm talking. But you want me to read the book so that you can verify that what we're saying is true, Mr. Wilson. Listen, I know you're having a hard time, and you're probably not on that committee. And I know maybe you should just go ask the guys in there and Sir, see. You really need to leave private property. Both of you, please. Well, I'm not going in without them. Well, that's up to you. So basically, it's weighted in your favor. We do it your way, and we have no rights. There's really not much more that I can say to you that I haven't already said. Will I be allowed to go in with my notes, my paper notes? I don't see why not. Last time I wasn't allowed to do that. Well, that's that's up to the brothers to discuss with you. I don't know the particulars of the meeting. Why don't we ask them to come out and tell me whether or not, because if I can't go with my private notes, then there's no use in me going in. It is your decision whether you want to attend the meeting, sir. I presume that you're here because you want to. So if you'd like to come inside, come inside. You can discuss everything you want with the, with the brothers on the committee. Could you call one of them out just to ask that question? If you'd like to ask them yourself, you may do so. I'd be happy to ask them, but okay, well, come on in. I'm not going in until I know the answer to that no. question. That's your prerogative. I'm only asking for an answer to a question. Well, you're asking your own person. Well, call them out. Can't they come to the front door? What would be wrong with you stepping inside to ask them yourself? What would be wrong with them coming out? I, I, this irony in this is really killing me because, you know, what is wrong with a uh, witness for the defense, right? When, especially when the KS book allows that. We've been over this. 
Uh, exactly. But, no, but not with an answer. But you see, the thing is, is that everything's on your terms, but you've never discussed or shown where those terms are found. Okay, Esco lays out terms. So the scriptures. You're not involved in this meeting. So, uh, uh, but you know what? That's your version of it. Exactly. His version is that we are witnesses for the defense. How can I defend myself okay. if I'm we not allowed witnesses? For the meeting, Eric. You're not answering my question. So Why this, should I answer this is yours? This a private meeting, and it's between you and that delegation. So, because it's a private meeting, only Eric is allowed on the property right now. But according to the case book, I'm allowed to have witnesses. That's it's a governing body. Now we're talking the governing body's direction. I'm allowed to have witnesses. So why can't I have witnesses? Now, just, somebody could just answer me that question. I'd be very satisfied just to have a direct answer to that question. Why can't I have my own witnesses? This, this is a private meeting. Okay, here we go again. I believe you're invited. Yes. The other gentlemen are tonight. That's, that's the reason. <laughs> You didn't say that yet, though. Yeah, we need one more to say it's a private meeting. <laughs> KS book outlines that you can have a uh, witness for the defense. It's there. We, d we don't know the nature of the meeting. We don't know the... I, I realize that, but yeah, they, so do, you, they, can come, they can let you... Are you that. not aware it's a ju judicial hearing? I'm sorry? Are you not aware that it's a judicial hearing? We just know there's a meeting going on. Okay, we'll tell yeah, you. you. It, it is a judicial hearing. Meeting. Than me? Okay, I'd be happy to. No, I'll wait here for them to come out. No. They all have to do is come to the door and answer one question. That's all they have to do, answer one question. They're going to give you the same answer. That is a private meeting. Yes. That's and not that's an, that's a non-answer. No, it's not. It's a pretty, pretty clear one. No, <laughs> and the sky is blue. That's about the same significance as it's a private meeting. It doesn't answer the question of why you're not following the direction of the governing body that allows me to have witnesses to my own defense. Why are you stripping me of the of the ability to defend myself? In other words, I can go in then with my witnesses. You may enter the building. Yes. With my witnesses. These gentlemen are already trespassing. On well, you. Property. No, they've they've come with invitation. No, they have not. They have not been invited. So it's not a judicial hearing then. It's like an interrogation because a judicial hearing would allow me witnesses. But an interrogation would not allow me any defense. Very strange. Yes. Yeah. Very strange. Well, I think we've pretty much exhausted this, don't you? Is there anything else we can do? Brothers, anything else that you want to discuss? You want to, you want to rethink it? You want to ask anybody? Before? So basically, you're asking me to leave. No, I'm not. On your, yes, on, you oh, are. Yes, you are. I'm asking to leave. Them. But I can't go in without these gentlemen. Of course you can. No, I can't. You won't. I not without. I'm not. I'm going in there to defend myself. I have no idea the, the nature of the conversation. Well, then, well, then trust me. Who does? Yeah, ask somebody who does know what the nature of the conversation is. Are you one of the committee members? No. no. See, if we could meet with one of the appeal committee members, we could then verify what this. So. Yes, but I have to go in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the meeting is set up as a courtesy to you. Oh, it's courtesy. a courtesy. Wow, that's a good word. Yeah, it's a courtesy. Yeah. So how wonderful. So we're going to ask you, you two gentlemen to leave. Um, I'm not leaving without him. Well, that's it, your, that, that's right. your choice. That, that's that's your choice. If, if you don't want to. You sure? Like you didn't ask him? We we're positive. And they didn't see you, you. They've already said that there's no way that they, they can have witnesses, even though the chaos book says so. Well, you know. I know. It's well, a lot well, of shrugging shoulders. It's a lot of, it's a private meeting. Oh, guys, I don't really know. 
I don't know the nature of it, but somebody knows on the this premises. Facts are very simple. Sir. Yeah, the you facts are. are trespassing. You know, the facts yes, are that we're going around in circles. I know that. I know that. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm just saying. You, you know, you could go in and you can end this really quickly if you just ask them. Or you could by just abiding by what, what the requirements are. Well, what the requirements are laid out right there. The case, yeah, the case book. The requirements. Requirements. You, you don't even want to look at it. Yeah. This is this is an army. And, and, I know and, that. And that's what we don't own that publication. My point is that. But it's those exactly are our that. guidelines. Those people inside there are the ones who are having the meeting. And they could easily come out and just say, hey, you know what? The CS book says that, so we can Sir, do that. You have no business being here. Uh, it's, it's, it's just that simple. Really? Okay, it says, after each witness has testified, the accused is given the opportunity to respond, that would be me, if he wishes to present witnesses to establish his innocence, he may do so. Then make that request. We're making a request for No, no, now. Oh, hold on, hold on, just a sec. Well, then hold, hold. why don't we go into... Why, don't, why, why don't, don't all of us go in? Wait. Why don't you all go and in if there? You are called in, you'll be called in. How hard is this? It's not hard. Then don't Brothers, it it's in black and white. Yeah, I, I, I don't you need... Are. I don't need to make a request. Like to make a request. I, excuse me. I don't need to make a request. The law establishes I have a right. I don't need to request that right. It's it's my right. It's right here in black and white and in you your publication. The exact same thing in any in any court in any in any meeting. Every single one of us would ask for that, that exact right, and, you're, and yet you're denying try, us that. I would not try to stipulate the rules of the court procedures. If the court tells me. Have your witnesses laid out in the hallway until they're called in. I would abide by the request. It's very simple. Well, then why don't you just find out then? That's all we're asking. Just find out. Go find out. If they say no, you can't have witnesses. We're going to turn around and go. Yeah, that's it. It's out. just that simple. That's, that's what we asked. That's Eric, what Eric's to go in and ask. No, that's what you're no. being told. No, you are no. trespassing on private property, right? Mm. And no. it's. Well, I guess they're just not going to do it. That's the fact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good day. Over and over, it's a private meeting. Only you are invited. This was an appeal to authority and a means to avoid facing the truth. Why were they willing to disobey their own written law? Obviously, just like the Pharisees of old, the oral law supersedes the written one and apparently can be made up on the spot. There were eight guards this time that we counted, plus at least six men inside. They wanted my companions to leave the property, kept accusing them of trespassing. They wanted me all to themselves, 14 against one. When I made a simple, reasonable request that one of the committee members come to the locked door, they would not agree even to that. Why? What was there to fear? One really has to wonder. The Bible says, let your reasonableness become known to all men. The Lord is near. Philippians 4.5 Jehovah's Witness pedophiles are smart enough to commit their horrific acts behind closed doors and out of sight of two or more witnesses. They know that the two-witness rule as practiced by Jehovah's Witnesses protects them. All JW judicial committees also operate behind closed doors and will not allow two or more witnesses to view the proceedings. One thing is clear from these two meetings. It is pointless to attend if you think you are going to be able to reason with these men. Their minds are already made up. They will not answer your questions, even if you repeat the same question over and over. They will simply evade, obfuscate, and prevaricate. In short, going by the definition Jared Loesch has provided, they will lie. Can you imagine going to a law court of the land where the prosecutor is also the judge? How likely is he to rule against himself? Can you imagine such a court where you are denied legal counsel and must defend yourself? Can you imagine a court where you cannot even bring your own witnesses to testify on your behalf? Can you imagine a court 
where those accusing you are allowed to avoid answering your questions. Can you imagine a court where the prosecution is actually allowed to violate the law? I have said that what Jehovah's Witnesses practice is not a judicial hearing, but an interrogation. However, that would be unfair to say, because even the police must carry out an interrogation in accordance with the laws of the land, and their actions are recorded. When I think of their guards, the fact they remained hidden, their fear of entering a room with me should I have my notes in hand, I'm reminded of a proverb a friend shared with me. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Should we fear them? No. They are the ones afraid of us. Instead, we should rejoice. A scripture that witnesses often bring up when discussing judicial matters is Hebrews 12, 6, which reads, For those whom Jehovah loves, he disciplines. In fact, he scourges everyone whom he receives as a son. The organization routinely misapplies this verse to soften the blow from judicial hearings, but that's not what it's talking about. This verse very much applies to us as God's children. Look at the context. The next verses read, You need to endure as part of your discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? But if you have not all shared in receiving this discipline, you are really illegitimate children and not sons. Hebrews 12, 7 and 8. If you have not all shared in receiving this discipline, we do not all experience judicial committees, do we? How can all Christians share in this discipline if it only applies when we sin? Further, the organization teaches that the other sheep are called God's friends. Yet here it speaks of his children. Are the other sheep excluded? No, of course not. So they must be God's children as well, because it says that if we are not disciplined, then we are illegitimate children, and we know that illegitimate children do not share in the inheritance from the Father, which is everlasting life. If you read verses 1 through 5, you'll see that the writer is comparing us to Jesus. Our Lord was disciplined by God, but not for sinning. When our integrity and loyalty to God are tested, it is something he permits as a form of discipline that refines us as his children. If we are not being disciplined in this way, then we are not his children. We are illegitimate. So we want the discipline, don't we? Ironically, a judicial hearing for apostasy is just such a form of discipline. He's using men who dwell in darkness, just like he used the Pharisees and priests of Jesus' day. The persecution comes from them, but the discipline comes from God and refines us as his children. So there is cause for us to rejoice. As I record this, 10 days have passed since the, the appeal hearing, and I've had no word from them. I did appeal one last time to the branch, so that may be why I've heard nothing. Here is the text of that letter. Without prejudice, gentlemen, on April 1st of this year, I was called to a committee hearing by the elders of the Aldershot Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was again called to attend an appeal hearing on April 26th. In both hearings, I was denied my basic human rights and what should be of greater importance to you, my scriptural rights. To begin with, I was denied a public hearing, even though I requested this in writing, and even though this is the accepted standard in both secular courts and in all the, ju the, and in all the judicial proceedings found in Scripture, both within Israel and later within the Christian congregation, the one notable exception being the illegal trial of our Lord Jesus Christ. Further, I was denied the right to bring in witnesses for the defense, but was required to make my defense alone, even without the benefit of counsel. <clears throat> I was confronted by a barricaded parking lot and an intimidating number of men standing guard. Further, I was required to leave my possessions and even my suit coat outside the meeting room. But it wasn't only my clothing that was to be stripped away. I was not even allowed to take my own notes into the meeting. We're talking about paper notes. It seemed to me that the process of all this intimidation and humiliation was to create an environment so toxic to the mounting of any successful defense that anyone would be a fool to enter. Thus, with my exit, the claim could be made that I was extended the courtesy, their word, of a hearing, but refused to accept. 
There are a number of other serious and potentially litigious issues, which I'm quite sure you are aware of, so I won't go into them again here. The purpose for this letter is to make one last attempt to resolve this issue before I'm forced to take it to higher authorities. I'm sure you have access to my demands, as detailed in my lawyer's letter directed to the Aldershot congregation. This, nevertheless, despite all the foregoing, I would still be willing to meet with the elders one last time if the following conditions are met. That a reasonable number of observers be allowed to attend. That I can bring my own... One, that a reasonable number of observers be allowed to attend. Two, that I can bring my own witnesses and that they will hear the proceedings. Three, that the hearing be recorded. Four, that I be allowed to use my computer for my defense. Five, that I am allowed to cross-examine all witnesses and anyone presenting evidence against me. Six, that my questions be answered without evasion nor prevarication. Seven, that assurances be given to all observers and witnesses that they can attend without fear of any negative repercussions. However, before agreeing to any of this, I must first know why this judicial process was initiated in the first place, given that I haven't associated with any congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in the past four years, and according to your own published policies, I should be allowed to leave the organization, fade away, unmolested. I await your response. Sincerely, Eric Wilson. If you want a copy of this letter, I'll include a link in the description of this video, or you can see it by going to bereans.net and searching for an article with the same title as this video. While it may be hard for some to be disfellowshipped seeing that it means being cut off from all family and friends, something far worse may be waiting for those executing this miscarriage of justice. In the case of those Jews who killed the Son of God, their nation was taken from them within their generation. Now consider what the Watchtower itself has to say about falsely labeling someone an apostate. According from the Watchtower, Jesus then went a step farther, saying, Whoever says, you despicable fool, will be liable to the fiery Gehenna, Matthew 5.22c. The Greek word rendered, you despicable fool, is more, a similar sounding Hebrew term, more, means rebellious, mutinous, whereas raka suggests intellectual stupidity, more designates one as morally worthless, an apostate, a rebel against God. Persons who would denounce their fellow in such a way would be liable to the fiery Gehenna. April 15, 1978, Watchtower, page 22. Now isn't that a sobering thought? My name is Eric Wilson. Please subscribe if you would like to be notified of more videos. Thank you for listening.